my name is Donia Frank, and I'm a National Research Council postdoc at the U.S. Naval Research Lab, and I work in the Marine Geosciences Sciences Division with Joseph Palantoni. Specifically, I work in the Sediment Dynamics Lab, and today I'll be talking about some of the measurements that we've made of sand and water interactions in our oscillatory water tunnel. And the reason we care about these small-scale interactions is that we can get very high-resolution data that we can use to inform our models and validate them so that the Navy will have better predictions of the environment in which they work. So upcoming is a picture of a small oscillatory water tunnel. And we generate oscillatory flow that goes like this. And then we can also generate steady flow in a recirculating manner. Here is a two meter long test section in which you can see coarse sand grains. And one of the instrumentation that we use to measure sand and fluid velocities are, is phase separated particle image velocity. So here we have the laser sheet optics which illuminates a 2D plane of the water column which has been seeded with fluorescent particles. And next we have the high-speed cameras which capture images from which we can determine the uh, sand and fluid velocities. These two cameras on the side are equipped with special optical filters to unleash track the fluorescent particles as it moves with the water flow. So now we'll zoom in on our laser sheet optics right here and then we'll scroll down to the high-speed cameras which can capture images up to 60,000 frames per second. But we perform PIV at 100 hertz. Uh, one set of experiments that we've done recently is incipient motion of sand on a flatbed. So these are sand grains and they're about 0.7 millimeters in diameter. The yellow arrows indicate the fluid velocities and right here you'll see that the sand particle moved over and the red line shows its track as it pops back across the bed um, moving with the flow. Next, we can also generate sand ripples in our tank. So here is a sand ripple and these yellow arrows indicate the water velocities and the red arrows are actually indicating the sand grain velocities. And now as the movie plays, we can see these color lines indicate the path that the grains took as they moved across the ripple crest and got deposited along the slope. At flow reversal, we see that a vortex has formed here, and as it moves back across the ripple, we see that the grains get mobilized and dumped across the ripple crest on the other side of the slope. Another cool thing we've been doing is to take PIV with a 12x telescoping lens. And what this allows us to do is to get the full resolution of the camera over one centimeter of the bed. And so now we have um, better images of what individual sand grains look like. So these are actual individual sand grains that are 0.7 millimeters in, di in diameter. We see that they look very large now because we have this 12x uh, telescoping lens. So as this movie plays, we can see that the individual grains get picked up um, by the water flow and get transported down the tunnel. So once again, um, my name is Dania and I work in the Sediment Dynamics Lab at NRL and this is just some of the data that we've taken in our small oscillatory flow tunnel.